Okay, so today we're gonna to be rocking that 80s, early 90s abstract art. I'm gonna to try to bring that back in this drink shot today. This is gonna be my background. I know I'm gonna really date myself here, but I'm an early 90s, 80s kid, and that artwork was everywhere when I was a kid. It was on notebooks for school, it was on clothes, the intro for Saved by the Bell. I'm not gonna do an exact replica of that 80s stuff, really. I, I just wanna bring that vibe today in my composition. Lots of lines, lots of shapes, interesting color combos. I know, I know, the obscure 80s reference and the abstract art has you pretty excited, but what's actually interesting about today's shoot is my brand new overhead camera setup. It's been about 10 years since I've changed the setup that I use for my flat lay or overhead photography, whatever you wanna call it, you know. The stuff that you guys see me do pretty much every YouTube video. But I'm pretty pumped about this new setup and I can't wait to show you all the little bits and bobs and doodads that are strung together to make this thing work. And not just work, but make it professional. Something that I would use pretty much every day. Can you guys see me on the monitor here? as hands. Real quick, a little PSA here. A subscriber reached out to me and said that she had bought in my course, which kind of surprised me because I haven't sold any courses for about two years now. She said she got it from a site. They sent her some kind of scam, some kind of virus. It was a real hassle, but luckily she got her money back. So I just wanted to make you guys aware that there's are, there are a ton of these websites out there. They're all scams. You know, it's great to buy a course, but if you're gonna buy one, buy it from the photographer's website or some other kind of reputable site that sells them. One more quick update is kind of just where I've been for the last couple months. I know I tend to leave YouTube and then I come back again, and a couple of you are like, where you been, dude? Did you die? I just had three major shoots over the summer that kind of just took up all my time. I, I didn't have enough time in between those shoots to make YouTube videos. I had a big resort shoot down in, in LA and I had another commercial video shoot in LA. And then I had to come back here and I did a complete product rebrand for a skincare company, which was you know, really cool and I captured some behind the scenes footage of that shoot. So hopefully I'll be able to share with you guys that here shortly on YouTube, but I have some other YouTube videos in the works that are in various stages of disrepair, and I hope to be putting them together here shortly too as well, so you guys can kind of see what I have been you know, doing in the studio. It's a little different than what I normally do, and I hope you guys enjoy it, but enough of that. Let's get back to this overhead camera setup. This is it in all its glory. No, I'm just kidding. This is the old setup. Well, you know, it's still a golden setup, and it's probably still one of the most stable setups that you can get for cheap. And I say that because all of these different parts can be broken down and used in other photography projects. Now, you've seen it in my other videos. I've been using it for years and I love this setup, but I think it's time for a change. And so I wanted to bring it out one last time before I show you guys my new setup. Two C stands, two grip heads, one extension arm with another grip head, a 3 4 inch stem, a ball head of your choice, and you're rocking stable shots from over the table. Of course, if you have four grand burning a hole in your pocket, you can get one of those commercial studio camera stands. You know, I would love one, but I just don't have the moolah for a glorified tripod, and those things don't travel. This thing barely travels, and the extra luggage fees at airports, you know, they're no joke. It's kind of cumbersome to raise and lower by yourself, and it just takes up a lot of floor space. Okay, real quick, I just want to show you guys a common setup that I see for grabbing an overhead shot. Now I see this all the time in photographers behind the scenes or some variation of this where you ditch one of the C-stands, you throw on your extension arm, your ball head adapter, your ball head, your camera, and then you sit here, hold on, let me stop this real quick. And every time you press the button, you sit there and watch your camera bounce up and down for eternity before you can do any kind of action or movement on the table. This can be so frustrating if you're trying to capture video or stop motion. Nearly impossible. You have to sit there and wait for your camera to settle down every time you want to take a shot. Okay, I have to stop it. It's been over a minute and the camera still hasn't settled down now. I, I wouldn't be this dramatic if, you know, I didn't see this all the time and I, I just know how frustrated the photographer must be. The extension arm and the contact point there at the C-stand, they're just not strong enough to suck up that vibration. So, enter my new camera setup. One low boy, three-fourths adapter, cross arm, ball head, 15-foot USB cable, 
a relay dummy battery for my Canon, tether block to protect my USB port, base plate for my ball head, a USB-C power relay, and a USB-C 150 watt battery, clamp and tablet holder, and you got a pro camera setup on a single stand. I've been working on this for a few months now, piecing it together kind of one by one, mostly from the company Tether Tools. I've always used their bright orange USB cables to shoot tethered with since pretty much the beginning of my studio photography. I haven't really needed a new USB cable for years, so I haven't really been following their new products. My lighting's kind of harsh right now and the colors are just not popping like I wanted them to, so diffusion paper to the rescue. All right, yeah, that lighting's looking better. Now, there's a ton of stuff that I love about this new overhead camera setup, but actually one of my favorite things is one of the first things that I got for it. It's this 150 watt battery or power pack that I have my camera plugged into. Before, I had a different dummy battery for my camera, which plugged into the wall. And to be honest, I hate wires. They're super annoying. There's a ton of wires usually when I'm on set and people always trip over them. Right now, there's only one wire coming off of this stand, which is this tether cable plugged into my computer. So this battery powers the camera forever. Not literally, but I used it on those three shoots that I talked about before and it lasted for days. And like I said, it's just one less wire on the floor to trip over. I can use it to power other things on my shoot as well. And it's small enough to travel with. Another really cool thing is that if for some reason I ran this battery dry, I could hot swap another battery with this relay and have no power interruption which is great for video. Another really cool thing that I like about this setup is this clamp and tablet holder. Now I used to have my tablet mounted right here at the front of my table, which seemed practical at the time, but it kind of just always ended up with me doing, you know, one of these moves to check my live view as I'm styling. I mean, it's good for stretching, but you know, it's not really conducive for creativity. So really to have it up here on the stand is just so much better. The clamp is made by a company called Frio and is super tight on this low boy. It has a ball head that this Aero tablet holder attaches to. Really stable, it's not going anywhere. And of course the best part is, I can adjust it to my line of sight as I style my composition here on the table. All right, the moment I know you've all been waiting for, the bounce test. Let's see how it does. I'll even give it a head start. Ready? Boosh. That's a pretty hard hit. I mean, if you're pressing your record button that hard every time, Maybe lighten your touch a little bit, but it's still a little bit of movement. Uh, I'm going to stop it there. 15.6, 16 seconds, basically. Not that big of a deal. It's a surprising, actually. And, you know, it is a heavy camera with a heavy lens hanging off an arm. It's never going to be rock solid like you placed it on a tripod. So there's always going to be a little bit of wiggle, but, you know, that's not that long to wait before you start your movement if you're doing video. It sure is not as long as a, a minute or over a minute from that first test where I just barely pressed the record button on a much lighter camera and then I just had to physically stop it because I got too bored of waiting. But 15 seconds, is it perfect? No, but it's doable. So like I said, I, I travel a lot for my shoots and one of my main goals here was to really just lighten the load of this whole traveling circus thing I got going on here with all the gear that I have to bring. One of the things I wanted to do is remove my tripod from my kit and build a stand that works not only above the table, but also in front of the food as well. Here, I'll just throw something back on the table. So when I'm done shooting my overhead shot, I can roll it in front of my table, drop it down just a tad like so, and then rotate my camera to the vertical or horizontal position, whatever I want to shoot. Lock down the feet, and I'm good to go. And it's kind of cool to have my camera just floating here above the table, you know, without the tripod getting in my way. And I can monitor my image here in Capture One or Lightroom. 
this composition is not very good, but you get what I mean. And with my old overhead setup, if I wanted to switch to this angle, I'd have to take the camera off, the wires, disconnect everything, the battery, and move it over here to the tripod, which was a big pain. With this setup, I don't have to do that. I just lower it, roll it over here, and I'm ready to rock. But that's it, that's my new camera setup for overhead or flat lay food photography, whatever you wanna call it. I really like it, it's very versatile, it saves me space, and like I said, sometimes I just feel like a traveling circus with the amount of gear that I have to take with me on the shoots or the amount of gear that I have to rent. And you know, if it saves me one less tripod, one less stand, one less extension arm and whatever wires, that's great because you know, it's money out of the budget. It's less stuff that I have to throw into a van or on an airplane. But if you like this, you wanna build it yourself, I'll bring, or I'll, I'll place all the, the links to each one of these pieces down below in the description. But as always, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, punch the notification bell, share it around, whatever you gotta do. Drop some comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Man, I need some more coffee.